Welcome to Old Movies for Young People. I'm Spencer Shunk. And I'm Brad Fraser. I'm an aging homosexual from the 20th century. Spencer is a young straight guy from the 21st century. And we get together and watch movies and discuss whether or not they have any validity in this new century. And today, the movie that we're going to be discussing is Imitation of Life. From 1959. Uh, it was produced by Ross Hunter. It was directed by Douglas Sirk. Lana Turner is a struggling widowed actress uh, who one day at the beach meets uh, Annie, played by Juanita Moore, uh, and their daughters go missing and are found together at the beach, but surprisingly Anna, Annie's daughter is just as white as Lana Turner's daughter. Yes, if one exists. Uh, someday. Why not today? I'm available. You? Me, Annie Johnson. You mean you'd consider leaving that lovely little girl? Oh, I wouldn't be leaving her. My baby goes where I go. Sarah Jane is your child? Yes, ma'am. It surprises most people. Sarah Jane favors are dead. Surprisingly, her cachet goes up with everyone she's auditioning for when they find out she has a maid. I'll call my place. I'll call. What's the number? Montgomery. Seven six one two zero. One two zero. Miss Meredith's residence. Oh, this is Miss Meredith's residence. <laughs> That'll be Annie, my maid. I'll talk to her. And slowly Lana Turner begins working her way up in the Hollywood world. The, the movie is basically told in two parts. In the first part, it's struggling actress Lana and maid Annie raising their young daughters. And Annie's daughter, Sarah Jean, seems to have a real issue with the fact that she looks white but is actually black. Come on. I don't want to live in the back. Why do we always have to live in the back? Shh, honey. Act two, Lana has finally achieved her dream, is a renowned Broadway actress, and now Annie is more than a maid, she's her maitre d' or her house... Mm -hmm. what, she she's runs the house. The head housekeeper. The head housekeeper. Yeah, Their daughters grow up to be lovely teenage girls. Uh, Lana's daughter becomes Sandra D, who is basically uninteresting and cute. And Annie's daughter is played by Susan Conner, who is transcendent in the role of a mixed-race woman trying desperately to find her place in the world. <laughs> but finally, I had to laugh. And he followed me. And he started to talk. He's cute. Really cute. Is he a colored boy? Why did you ask that? I don't know. It just slipped out. It was the first thing you thought of. I told you, it just slipped out. Well, he's white. And if he ever finds out about me, I'll kill myself. What's so interesting that I find about this narrative is that, like you're saying, at the halfway point, it becomes a shared story about four women rather than one or two women. We're kind of expecting the rise to stardom story and then maybe the fall, but we don't get that. Rather, what we get, uh, honestly, for me, the central character kind of becomes uh, Sarah, Sarah Jean. Jane. Sarah Jane, excuse me, uh, who, because she can pass as white and now she is growing into a young adult woman, she decides that's exactly what she's going to do because, you know, obviously it affords her much more privilege in 1950s society. She is out there sleeping with Troy Donahue, who beats her up when he finds out she's actually black. Yeah. It's horrifying. What difference does it make? You love me. All the kids talking behind my back. Is it true? No. Are you black? No, I'm as white as you. You're lying. I'm not. She runs away from home and she becomes, uh, I guess you would, oh, it's almost like a burlesque dancer. She's a dancer in a review, kind yes. of vaudeville type of thing. And yeah, Annie tracks her right down and she's made up a whole other life for herself, a whole other backstory. And she and asks yeah. her mother to never, ever yeah. see her again. Are you happy here, honey? Are you finding what you really want? I'm somebody else. I'm white. White. White! <laughs> Does that answer you? I guess so. Then please, Mama, will you go? And never do this again. 
The movie, of course, has a tragic ending as most melodramas do. Not everybody's going to get out of alive or happy, but thankfully Lana Turner always will. Uh, Annie, on the other hand, dies of a broken heart with the loss of her daughter, but before she goes, she reminds Lana that she's put a little money away for the kind of funeral she's always wanted, and Lana promises she will give her that funeral. I'm go the way I planned, especially the four white horses and a band plan. No mourning, but proud and high-stepping, like I was gone to glory. Well, apparently, unbeknownst to us, Annie, who's mostly been a maid all of her life, also knows everybody in New York City. <laughs> they all show up for her funeral. The avenue is lined with thousands of people. There's a hearse with four white horses. It's covered in white roses, and at the very end, Mahalia Jackson is singing yeah. a beautiful spiritual song to send her off, and Sarah Jane shows up. Mama! Mama! I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Mama, do you hear me? I'm sorry. And this movie is all about the women. The men are almost inconsequential. Yes. They're their plot points. They feel things. But it's all about the women, and they're really trying to support one another most of the time, yes. even though that's where the conflicts come in. It's not the fact that they don't love each other. They all do love one another, but it's very complicated. What do you think would resonate with a modern audience in this film? I think the depiction of race relations and uh, the whole sort of uh, debate about passing that the movie kind of represents, because I, I think what we haven't gone into so far, or what you've touched on, is that uh, Sarah Jean is actually very sympathetic, even though she's so horrible to her mother. She's on a different medium than the stage. She will need the rehearsal. She will need... It's Joel, a mess of crowd ads, Miss Laura, for you and your friends. Well, that's quite a trick, Sarah Jane. Where did you learn it? Oh, no trick to tote, Miss Laura. I learned it from my mammy, and she learned it from old massa, for she belonged to you. It's interesting because it's so 20th century. I mean, they are trying to talk about feminism. They are trying to talk about race issues, but they're still hedging their bets. I will say this movie to me, I found surprisingly progressive for yes. its time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think we should talk about how Annie is a kind of a faultless character to a fault. You might say a magical Negro type exactly. of trope, uh, which I think uh, modern audiences might have a problem with. Uh, despite, but well, Juanita Moore is so winning and so excellent in the role that you right. don't want to take anything away from her performance. I'm a fan of Lana Turner. I think Lana Turner's made a number of very good movies and a whole bunch of really bad ones. But she always approach. You know, she's not a great actress. But she is a fucking excellent movie star. Movie but the history. thing you have to love yeah. about the movie and about Ross Hunter and Douglas Sirk is they left nothing to chance. And if you've seen Todd Haynes' Closer to Heaven, you've seen someone try to rip that off quite well, actually. But there is a, a look to Douglas Sirk movies. There is a glossiness. There is a, a, an attention to detail. I say, <laughs> check it out. It's well worth a look. That was Imitation of Life, and this is Old Movies for Young People.